Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and in today's video we are going to talk about a novel, a gothic novel that's called The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. This is a French author and this is considered a gothic work. So in this book we have a narrator that is going to tell us like the story of a phantom or the the myth of a phantom of the opera of Par Paris and in the prologue that is that is a prologue from the author we have him like convincing us that this story is a true story and that the Phantom of the Opera of Paris really existed. And we have here like in the prologue like a, a appreciation of the narrator for the uh, many people that he interviewed and that gave their testimony about the legend or the myth of the phantom and so i think i'm not sure please um, correct me if i'm wrong but i think that the narration of this book the story of this book uh, is passing 30 years after the um, events that the narrator is telling us and so the story begins with a pre a, like a presentation of the ambience of the opera like in the in the corridors and in preparation for an uh, opera uh, we get to know many characters that are singers opera singers that are dancers uh, that are concierge and we understand right at the beginning that there were two directors of the opera, the Paris Opera, uh, and they are quitting and other two directors are entering um, to take uh, charge of the opera. And in the first uh, chapters of this book we are presented as I've said to some characters and those characters uh, uh, talk about that they seen the, the phantom and that um, it's like they're telling stories to each other about people that saw him or where they saw him or how he was, they characterize him as a um, really thin man and uh, that's wearing a black cape and it's all in black and his head is like a cadaveric head like a um, cadaveric, I don't know if the, the expression is correct but it's like, um, how do you say it? I'm so sorry, today I don't have internet in my house so I can't tell, hel have the help of Google Translator that in so many times saves me in these situations so please forgive me if I'm not going to find the right expressions but today I don't have help but so they were saying that uh, he said was like, um, like how do you call it when, um, like it just bone, do you understand, uh, cranium, you know, and with really hollow eyes, and so um, through the beginning of this story, we find out that there were there were like a suicide in the opera, or what they suspect it was a suicide because 
they found out in the galleries of the opera they find a man hang, hangs um, and it's like uh, a story that circulates the whole opera and the, the society like um, because the myth of the phantom is not just in the ambience of the opera it's like the whole society of Paris knows about the phantom and they all um, conjecture who he is or how he is and so on and so this situation happens a suicide or what they think is a suicide and the police is involved and one thing that we know about the opera and I think that are many facts that are um, told in this story are true some of, some of them at least because throughout the, the reading of this book we have notes at the end of the pages and those notes are from the narrator so it's really funny and really interesting how that is because you know it's like he's telling um, because our narrator he's investigating the veracity of the existence of the Phantom of the Opera and so he's telling us stories that he heard of some people or uh, of um, papers that he gathered proofs you know because he in the prologue says that he has proofs that the phantom really existed and so we have notes throughout the the book uh, explaining us some things and contextualizing some things and one thing that is said about the opera and i suppose that is true is that the opera of paris was constructed on top of a lake so um, um watery terrain and they weren't able to conduct that water so the galleries of the opera um, are dark and they are watery and there really exists a lake below the opera and through the meat of the phantom uh, the galleries belong to him so he lived in the galleries of the opera and so uh, this man is that was found hanged was found in the galleries and he was a chief engineer of the opera and the rumors become to wonder that um, it was the phantom who killed him so that case circulates surrounding the people that work at the opera and they all blame the phantom so uh, the new directors of the opera began to receive letters and those letters are signed by the phantom of the opera like right as I said and the phantom is saying to the directors that he wants that they behave as the l uh, last directors behaved so his conditions are that they give him a um, monthly payment I think it's 20,000 francs if I'm not mistaken and that the fifth how do you call it it's like so there are seats in the theater in the opera theater right but then there are um, those that are above and so he wants one of those only to him every night at the opera and they the directors find out that the letters are be, are uh, getting to them by Meg Jury and Meg Jury is a concierge of the opera and she has contact with the phantom of the opera she doesn't see him or anything but they 
she gives him the envelopes through from the directors and vice versa so she's like um, correspondent of the phantom and they the new directors try to interview miss jury and find out what she is doing because they don't believe that the phantom exists and um, they suspect that Miss Jury is like cracking a joke to them and they blame her for the perpet perpetuation of the myth but the phantom in the letter that he gives the directors he's very clear that if they not obey him consequences will happen and so strange things become to happen in the opera because they don't give the money and they don't give him the um, the seat that he wants in the opera they sell that seat and real consequences happen and in the between this story we are presented to Christine Dye I think that's how you pronounce it if it's not please correct me and she is uh, described as a young girl who is a young talent she's a singer or uh, opera singer but she's not the star of the show the star of the show is a Spanish woman called Carlota uh, that we understand that the Phantom doesn't like her at all she, he doesn't think that she is a great singer as all the society that goes to the opera thinks uh, and we find out that Christine is an orphan I think she's like 17 or something and her her dad was a violinist and her mother uh, died r right after she was born so um, she never knew her mother but she knew her father but her father died some years ago and she's from Sweden I think yes and they were seen in the streets because they, uh, the father plays the violin and she would sing in the streets to make money. And they were discovered by a man who um, put a wing on them and liked a lot of the voice of uh, Christine and he volunteered to bring them to Paris and educate Christine so he was like a mentor in a way that's what I'm trying to say has another name he, he was like a protege, um, protege no um, a good venture man that tried to help that family and so he would bank the education of Christine and Christine was now working at the Opera of Paris she was a singer and one night um, Carlotta can't, that was the star of the, the play uh, couldn't make it I don't remember exactly why I think she was ill or something and at last minute they say to Christine that she is going to play the main character so she is going to be the main singer at that play of the opera and well till that point Christine wasn't seen as a great talent she was talented but not something special you know but in that night she was absolutely marvelous she um, seduced everyone that was in that audience and one of the people that were in that audience was Raoul that was the Vicount of Chagny so Raoul was 
uh, brother of the Count of Chagny, Philip, and uh, Philip was a great... Um, so he would go to the opera uh, many times and Raoul was studying, I think, abroad and he came back, he came back and he was at the opera that night when Christine just was brilliant. And we find out that Raoul and Christine knew each other from childhood and they were best friends. And Raoul was marveled by what Christine did in that play. And so he goes and try to go to her... Um, how do you say it? Um, Camerin. <laughs> I don't remember the name. So where the room where um, the artists have in the theater, you know what I mean? So, uh, but he um, hears a voice that is not Christine, that is a man's voice. And he, instead of knocking and trying to talk to Christine, he stays outside hearing what's happening in the room. And so he becomes like a bit surprised that Christine is with a man in her room. And then as, a long, as long um, throughout the story, so I'm not going to say uh, every single thing that happens in sequence. I don't want to give you spoilers or give too much of the story. I'm just going to say some things that happen in the story. Um, and I'm not going to give you the ending or anything because this video in particular is without spoilers. But so we find out that Christine, when she was young, her father would say to her that a music angel would come to her and would help her to be a great singer. And we find out that she is talking to that angel. And who's, who is that angel? That angel is the Phantom of the Opera. But at that point, Christine doesn't believe in the Phantom. She knows about him because she, she hears the stories surrounding the Phantom. But what she thinks that is happening in her camerin, so in her room in the opera, is that she's speaking to the music angel, so what her father told her. And so that music angel is giving her lessons, so she improves her singing uh, capabilities. And so that's why when that night arrives, she gives a show. Because she's, she was having lessons with that music angel. And so Raoul likes Christine. And she becomes, he becomes jealous. And he wants to know who that man is. And when Christine get, gets out of the room, he goes in. And it's all dark. And he calls to him. Who is there? What is your name? But no one answers. Um, and so later in the story, we find out that, w well, Christine's, Christine find out that the music angel that she was talking to is the phantom. So the phantom and the angel are the same person. And she, find out, she finds out that the, the Phantom lives in the galleries of the opera. And we become to realize that their relationship is really toxic. Because the Phantom is so manipulative. He, um, he extra... Um, He 
feel like he imprisons Christine to that idea and that guilt of uh, because it was because of him that she becomes a great singer and so she's in debt to him in a way and she feels that guilt and the Phantom of the Opera is in love with Christine and he wants her to become his wife and he seduces well he, he kidnaps her <laughs> to the galleries to his house in the galleries and he has a mask on and it's a point in the story where she is with him in the galleries and she's so curious to see his face that she takes off his mask and she sees that you know he has um, a deformation in his face you know he's ugly he's not um, attractive or anything and she becomes a bit repulsive by him and well and he says like if she if he was beautiful maybe she would feel another way and so we have here um, a relationship that is not healthy because Christine has guilt and has pity of the phantom and the phantom is taking advantage of the youth of Christine and her naive um, innocence and she's she's being a bit naive to take her to uh, for him and at the same time Raoul is um, trying to also um, seduce Christine Raoul I think is the same age of Christine so he's young as well like 17 18 and Raoul is um, really jealous and also really manipulative so she's being torn by these two men so so is a love triangle that is so toxic in every direction that Christine is like a victim in the middle and so we have then the story progressing like Raoul trying to save Christine from the the grip of the phantom because he thinks that she's giving her away to him just because he helped her and you know Raoul is in love with her and Christine is in love with Raoul but she has pity of the phantom and she's like she feels she, she's in debt to him and so we have here um, dance of these sort of feelings that these three characters are having so three perspectives uh, but throughout the story we have one narrator that is like investigating these uh, events so he's telling stories that he was told or he read testimonies and as I said before in the beginning of the story we have a hanged man but throughout the story we will have uh, other deaths and strange in strange circumstances so for example the brother of Raoul Philip of Chagny the count is found in a, a river or a lake near the opera dead you know and we never find out what happened and if he fell on his own or he or if he, he he was put there after he was killed so we never find out but of course we suspect the phantom and right in the prologue we have the description that uh, Christine of Thai was kidnapped from the opera in one night 
So she was giving um, play, she was singing, and then in the middle of the play, she was kidnapped. She disappears, and they don't know where she went, who kidnapped her. So an investigation begins by the police, but the detective of the police that is called to investigate the disappearance of Christine of Dai doesn't believe in the Phantom of the Opera. So all the, the description of, of the director, of Miss Giri and so on, he's like, well, okay, okay. <laughs> Those people are mad. And so we have here, um, oh, so then we have an ambience of the architecture of the opera. So that's a Gothic element. We have the, that duplicity of the, what is above and under. So what is above the galleries and under the galleries, the underground, that, you know, that duality between light and dark. That's also a ele uh, gothic element. And um, we have here this romance that is from, if we look at the love of the Phantom for Christine or the love of Raoul for Christine, we see that she doesn't have really good options, poor thing. <laughs> uh, but you know, um, so it has gothic elements, it has romance uh, and many other characters that I didn't talk about here but they are really interesting as well and they give very um, they, they add to the story so another thing that we find out about the Phantom is his past so there's a character here that is called the Persian that he, he knows a lot about the life of the Phantom of the Opera. He is always in the opera and it's like he's trying to follow the, the Phantom. And we find out where the, the fan, like the past from where he grew up, who, what he did before he went to Paris. And we find out that the Phantom also architect the, the opera or he was one who, one of the, of the people who participated in the architecture of the opera. And there is a story here that is uh, told by the Persian, so it's a first person narration uh, in this book that um, is telling a story where Raoul and the Persian were in the galleries trying to find Christine and they were um, caught in one of the Machiavellic ideas of a prison constructed by the Phantom. So very interesting. Then the ending is we never really find out, well, we find out what happens, but there is not a continuation of the story. So, um, we find out what happens in general ideas. But I really loved uh, reading this book. Uh, a curiosity about this is that I have it here. So, this was written in like chapters between 1909 and 1910 this was like I, I don't know if it was a magazine or something but it, it was publicated in chapters and then it was publicated in a book in April of 1910 uh, so this is a old book a old story but uh, still very beautiful 
I really enjoyed reading this. Um, this is a type of book that you don't get bored by it or tired of reading. Of course, it's not too big as well, but it's an exciting story. You want to know what is happening like or what's going to happen. So it's really interesting and I really, I have to say that I didn't read so many gothic books, um, but I really like the ambience of gothic books. Um, I think it's, it has a particular type of descriptions and um, character development that is really interesting. So I really enjoyed reading this one and you have a sort of feelings and emotions reading this book because the characters are not perfect. Uh, they are real humans with real human feelings and real human behaviors and you can, you can be on their back like um, hoping that everything goes right to them but at the same time you're like, hmm, I didn't like what you did there. So it's really interesting how the characters, um, you would sometimes are, oh, there's a Portuguese expression to this, but I don't know the expression in, in English. Oh my God. Uh, so you want to torcer por eles. <laughs> how do you say it? You want to be like uh, cheering for them, but at the same time you reprehend them because you don't like what they do. So it has that duality as well. Uh, so I really enjoy this one. I really advise you to read it. I think it's a, a really good ambience for Halloween and the month of October. And yeah, I hope you have enjoyed it. I think that's all that I wanted to say. So please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Don't forget to press the ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications. Leave a like, it helps a lot the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. And yeah, I hope you have enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.